Together. I am together and it is Sunday morning and we are together and we are here on Art of Rock. Yes! Uh, my mic is live. Yours isn't yet. I'm gonna give up on speaking simple English because I just don't feel like it. Rob, I see you in the chat. Welcome. This is Art of Rock. Every Saturday, uh, we don't do anything, but on Sunday, we're here at this time. If a little tiny bit late. And follow Angel Spitz Twitch, because there's also always something crazy going on there. And whenever I'm not twitching, which hasn't been much of late, I just host other people who twitch, one of whom is Grim. Um, amongst other rock stars. This craziness was made possible with Angel Spitz Patreon. Uh, Angel Spitz Patreon, many of the members are here, and I am so grateful for you. You keep me going, and I say this every week, I will keep you going too. Um, if you want to check out more stuff on Angel Spit's Patreon, it's there, including the beginnings of a new, I'm calling it Angel Spit version 3, a new experimentation into Sonic Hell. Um, it is old school samplers, it is distortion pedals, it's, that's it. And it's very harsh, very brittle, and involves me screaming at a microphone. And all the songs I'm trying to be under three minutes. It's, it is industrial punk rock. Um, and the first one drops, uh, this month. So in a couple of days, um, and I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited to hear, see what you guys think about it. Cause it's, it's, it is, it is what you'd expect from Angel Spit times several more. There's no music. There's no playing notes. There's no big chords. None of that. All sound and music is derived from the harmonics in the metal that I am smashing. Literally. Then it gets distorted, and it's this is totally new. Um, and I hope you like it. Uh, meanwhile, in space, Angel Spit and Ice Planet 9000 are kickstarting Glass Jar. Uh, we got the test printings last week, and it sounds really awesome, and we are really excited about this. So if you want something crazy different, check out Glass Jar. It's like ambient, sci-fi, kind of a bit dark. 70s synthesizer instrumentals on vinyl. It's also coming out on digital. It won't be out on CD. It's kickstarting. You can also get this amazing diorama woo, that comes with it. Um, and that is only available on the Kickstarter. And we are so thrilled with that. Angel Spitz Diesel Priest comes out next Friday. And Patreon members get a free copy. Patreon members also get a free digital copy of Glass Jar and the uh, audio script booklet that comes along with it, which is really fucking crazy. You're also getting a free copy of, a uh, digital copy of um, Diesel Priest this Friday. And I accidentally released it on a Bandcamp Friday because we've talked about that. Um, but it's coming out and I'm super happy because it's a bloody good album. If I don't say so myself. Am I allowed to say that? I don't know. If you want to hear more bloody good tracks, get on Spotify and click that damn link. Um, that's a whole bunch of tracks that are written by us here, peoples, from The Art of Rock. I just added a track from Eric, and it's bloody amazing. Speaking of Eric's project, Hex and uh, uh, Hanging Raven. I need to ask you about Hanging Ravens. Um, he just released an EP. It's there. Get it off Bandcamp now. And if you can't afford it on Bandcamp, go listen to it on the Out of Rock uh, Spotify playlist and add it to your Spotify list because there's a whole bunch of amazing music there. And if you want more amazing music, 24 hour a day, non-stop amazing music, you need MTV TV. It is streaming on Twitch right now. Go watch it. Go listen to it. Um, and we're going to stream over there when we're done. And if you've got a video and if you're in a band, like a dark band and you wear dark clothes, and you go, no, mom, I won't clean my room, send them to that email, and they will play your video clip, and it will be amazing. MTV TV are also doing a, a Patreon, because it ain't cheap keeping a 24-hour-a-day TV sh station going, so go and support it. Back those kids. I do, because um, they need it. They need the support. Our scene needs it. Our scene needs MTV TV. And if you want to learn your new favorite band, it's there waiting for you. And if you're looking for your new audience, it's there waiting for you on MTV TV. Where is Diana and Adam? I just don't know. This is The Art of Rock. Your mics are live. Let's talk about stuff. I'm going to throw it to you, Grim. You had a question about stuff. <laughs> 
stuff and things and you know we could do we could do all the things as hack says um uh, now i uh, uh i had a doc brown moment the other day and maybe it's just me or it's new to me but all of a sudden i was just like that's it that's the thing that's what i should be doing so uh inspiration is fickle it came from this really uh cringy commercial that popped up on my feed that was like why don't you show people how much you love them by getting them a metal tag that's got a Spotify logo and the bars for a song they love. And I was like, that's so stupid. Wait a minute. So in all of my ramblings, if you take away anything, I think that if, if you haven't incorporated it or thought about incorporating it, you should get the, the scannable bars or whatever that is for Spotify for your track, your album, your thing and or a QR code and find a way to print it on ancillary products, things that people can hold, uh, wristbands, T-shirts, WTF. Stickers. Whatever. Yeah, whatever it is. So that way they can scan it and it will be that lead track, that, you know, that brainchild, that premiere, that single, that release, that brand new thing or album, whatever it is. But I digress. Spotify bars and qr codes and scannable shit so however you can make that happen i just wanted to put that out there in the world and maybe you guys know more things of different ser branch services that offer similar things i love it that's brilliant okay can i i'm gonna start shooting my mouth off about this it's, it's a really great idea i've done this myself um there is a qr code funny thing is i don't think the website i know Okay, so I believe a QR code can store up to seven and a half thousand uh, uh, characters of text. So you could put a, a short story in a Q QR code. Um, it's uh, there. Are, uh, I know you want to talk. I know. Hold on, I'm going to finish. Let me finish. Um, then you can then you can correct me, John. Um, uh, you can also do a, an image, I think. Obviously, URLs. URL uh, QR codes are a lot fatter and chunkier because there's less information. Um, my So the thing about a QR code, if you put it on a, a wristband, or a, and wristbands are difficult because of the size, but when you're dealing with something that is going to be around for a long time, um, like a wristband or a dog tag or one of these things... Uh, remember that whatever it's pointing towards also has to be around a long time. So a QR code for Spotify is a great idea. Just remember that Spotify links can change. For example, if you get signed and you go, I'm going to take it off my thing and I'm going to give it to a, a record label, um, the record label is going to re-host that, that track and you're going to use lose the URL. I haven't seen that T-shirt in a long time, Grim, but I digress. Um, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, thank you. Um, uh, so whatever it's pointing to, make sure it's a long-term thing because even this thing here, which I thought was a great idea, it's that goes to a 10% uh, off discount code, discount code. But the problem is the website that that was using, that was back in the days when I was using a Shopify. I don't use the Shopify anymore given that was five years, but it does still exist. So I think they're great ideas. I think you should put QR codes on stickers on everything. It's really interesting that there are more Q QR codes and phones kind of automatically, I think, read QR codes now. About five years ago, six years ago, we were doing the Nosferatu thing that had a QR code on the screen. People had to download an app for that. And people are going, no, QR codes won't take off. Why do I listen to people? Um, but they have. John, tell me I'm wrong. You're right. Um, I, you know, the, <laughs> the thing I wanted to jump in on is just because something has a maximum doesn't mean you should use the maximum. So QR codes, uh, they have, uh, like the way that they're written, you notice that they have like three squares, large squares that uses, um, you know, that orients uh, basically the software into what it is. And then uh, the rest of it is that encoded data. And it has built in error correction, you know, within. But the more data that you have in there, the more little squares there are. The more little squares there are, the more opportunities there are for error. 
you know, and especially if you're uh, putting it on something like a textile or um, something that, you know, is going to have an uneven surface or, you know, even like a poster, if it's not like completely flat against the wall, uh, the more detail that is in there, the harder it will be to read. So use a URL shortener, use something like Linktree that, you know, is like, uh, you know, it's like to your point of having an evergreen URL, something that will remain consistent over time, send it to something that you control and are confident that is not going to change. Um, using something like Linktree um, or, or, or that type of product where it's dynamic, you control what it points to is like, here's a bunch of like high level headings, like use it as a springboard to like all your other products. Click here to hear my latest album, click here to buy my shit on Bandcamp. You know, here's my main website, whatever it may be, you know, um, you know, just generate basically like the one code and put it in multiple places. I completely agree with Grimm's idea of like, put that stuff kind of like everywhere, like especially like if you have it on an album or a shirt even, even though um, if it is a shirt, be mindful of like the fact that it might be all over the place. Um, so, um, but hey, if people are willing to promote your stuff and actually like have you know have a direct link to your thing on it, that's that's awesome. But yeah, you know, so TLDR, keep it simple, keep it short, have a static target that you control. What does TLDR mean? Too long, didn't read. So it's like uh, if uh, it's 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 older internet slang, like when someone would talk. Um, oh, write, like, oh, I'm long. sorry, I don't understand the original gangsta internet chat. I'm sorry, John. I'm okay. sorry. I, I'm oh. sorry. I must have missed that when I was using sorry. Flash. We're on when I was programming channel. HTML one. Oh, well, back in my day when I was using punch cards. You know. <laughs> yes, in the snow. And the problem was in the snow, which I had to walk through. Shut up, Grim. When I had to walk <laughs> no, through that where? snow, the punch cards would become moist and sloppy. And I lost information. Anyway, <laughs> as I was saying before, John went on his rampage. Um, yeah, doing a link tree is, a, is thank you, John. That was good. Uh, it's actually a really good idea. Um, or linking back to your something, but that this is something that we have ongoing. Um, yeah, so so this is actually really good because you, you, you're getting to see, um, you, you're, you're putting a, a, an, an, a long-term thing on something that's short-term. And by short-term, it could be five years or so. Um, you, you know what I mean? But whereas a t-shirt, you know, I, I think that's an excellent idea. I'm all about it. But, you know, it's just one of those meta things. I'm having a meta moment. I'm going to stop now. But this is, it's a really good idea and a really good conversation. If anybody want, else wants to jump in on this with something of relevance that's going to save me and make me look smart, please go. Okay, maybe not make me look smart. <laughs> All right, I see tumbleweeds. Oh, no, I do. Eric, talk to me. Oh, look, two humans. Um, well, uh, how do you go about doing it? Making me look smart? <laughs> or doing well, what? That one's, that one's hopeless. <laughs> but the question of... You fuckers. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Um, no, how do you go about getting QR codes? I've never done it, so what's the first step? Well, John, do you want to... Um... There are all sorts of websites out there. I can, you know, we can come up with links. Also, Chrome will do it by default now. It's built in. It'll, you can, uh, you can, yeah. So Chrome, Chrome will do it. Um, let's see. Just, I'm honestly just Google or, or DuckDuckGo QR code generator. You know, it's like yeah. That's, yeah. It's like, it, it, it's an open technology. And as for the readers, um, yeah, uh, Google Photos will do it automatically now, um, like a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of different camera apps will like handle it. It's not, it's a secondary piece of software, but like it's pretty ubiquitous these days. So like I, I would, you know, for all intents and purposes, everybody has access to it. And if they don't have access to it, then well, then they're Carl's age. <laughs> God. Carl's gonna have to start wearing a bulletproof vest in the Zoom chat. <laughs> 
No, I'm going to have to wear a banana free vest. More like bulletproof depends. Come on, Toro. All right, hold on. No, no, you guys can do better than this. Come on. So I'm just going to put in, this is a QR code generator that I use. Um, and I'll put this in the chats as well. Wow. Wow. Zoom chats, Incredible. fuck off. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off, you cunts. <laughs> Um, Goodluck.com. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's one that I use a lot. And and the cool thing about it is when you get the QR code, you can actually specify, it, uh, is it just a URL? Because that's going to be a shorter, more chunky one, like John was saying. Um, and you can download it as an EPS file, as a PNG file, and as a GIF file, uh, as a JPEG. And my advice is get it as big as you possibly can. Uh, using uh, an EPS is great because it's a vector. And you want vectors for this. And, the, and as John mentioned as well, the cool thing about a QR code is you can put it on an angle. You can do anything you want because it's going to detect where it is and what's going on. Uh, Alex, I see your very patient hand. Yes, maybe as a short uh, and sweet idea, uh, some German ambulance uh, has like um, on their vehicle uh, QR codes which are hidden. And the idea is that if someone takes a photo of an accident when they shouldn't, they get like a message as a QR code, hey, don't uh, don't uh, take photos, it's um, legal, don't do it. And I thought maybe you could use invisible or like hidden QR codes in your own um, artwork. That would be a cool idea, maybe as an inspiration. That's a really cool idea. Um... <clears throat> Actually, I'm just thinking that's a really cool idea because I just put out a fucking CD and I never have space for the lyrics. And I really should put a QR code on there that's hit here for the lyrics because they're all online. That's a great idea. Grim, go. Yeah, I was about to say in tandem with that, I mean, hell, if people come to the show, you know, you could have that somewhere as part of your set or if you're doing a stream or I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of or or ors but yeah they absolutely they could scan for a, a discount they could scan for a free downloadable track if they already bought x then they can scan and get y um yeah that's and, badass and if it's also shooting back if you have the one qr code to shoot back to the main to the same place to that link tree you can put at the top of your link tree uh 10 percent off your next thing here download a free copy of blah 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 here so no matter what it is, you can be changing the content of the of the landing page. As a thought, this is good. This is positive. I like it. Um, does anybody else? Um, where is Julius? Ah, uh, Julius, get in. In fact, everybody there, get in. Um, uh, it, does anybody else have anything they want to add to this very interesting and brilliant QR thing, or do we want to move on to? Just wanted to mention that I, I feel like there's a lot of potential for like using QR codes as like a design element. I feel like they could really be incorporated really nicely with like, I mean, obviously Angel Spit did it well with the like pixel and black and white and red graphics. So I feel like it would work really well if you're using like a really digital aesthetic on your album or, or whatever art it is, like, it'll fit right in. And that's something that would be sort of neat. <laughs> Yeah. It would, yeah. I could imagine, yeah, if you had like a look like a computer motherboard design, like a big diamond, but then it's got all the leads lead into a center logo, but then you've got your QRs on the corners and stuff. That'd be badass. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot you can do with it. I mean like um having additional content, additional meaning, all sorts of things. Cause you know, normally when I do an album I'm gonna have a set URL that the album goes to. I used to buy the domain for that album, but I'm trying not to do that anymore because it ends up being really fucking expensive. But if, if you have just a URL that is like hacked onto your website, it'll always be going there. There's Shay yelling at me. Um, tell you what, you guys keep talking about this for the second. I need to get that cat. Um, and uh, uh, if, if you can stay focused on this QR thing, it's awesome. I'll be right back. <laughs> now just building upon that on 
yeah, a digital rod is a thing. Um, and also just maintaining different websites, you know, because, you know, domain, domains can be expensive. It's like one, it's like, it's free, you know, or, or really, or very cheap upfront, but then you have 10 websites and each one of them is up for renewal and that's five, 10 bucks a pop. And then suddenly it's like, you know, it's like, how are you dealing with all the hosting? I mean, you know, it's like, it, have you registered them all through the same place? Like, it's a lot to keep track of. And then the other thing is if you let a domain lapse, uh, there are domain squatters that will basically like people are just waiting around for something to expire and uh, we'll just buy it up. And then, um, and then if you want it back, it's like, okay, cool. Yeah, you may have paid like 10 bucks to register this at some point, but like now I want $500. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had that happen. I, I had a uh, a joke website, which is rude, which I'll just say it because I, you know, uh, is massivewing.com. And I got it like back when in college, like in like, geez, like probably like 2000, I think I, I, I registered that. And I had it around for a few years. And then it was like, you know what, I, I've, I've grown out of this. I don't, I don't want that name anymore. I let it lapse. And that was exactly what happened. Like the guy wanted like $1,000 for it. It's like, I did this as a joke, you know, and, uh, and, and so, and I, I took note of like when it would expire and he was like, and I was like, I'll give you 20 bucks for it. And he was like 200. I'm like, eat it. Like, no. <laughs> and, and I, so I took note of when the domain expired and just, you know, set a calendar entry, looked, you know, he didn't renew it. It became available. I took it back, <laughs> but yeah, point, but you know, why, why send, you know, it's like, it's hard enough to get, keep people's attention, keep it focused in one place, you know, have like a primary domain. It is okay. You can do subdomains off that if you want, you know, you could do, you know, ice planet 9000.angelspit.net, for example, if you didn't want to do a separate, you know, domain, you know, that, that kind of thing. It's like, it's still under the same brand or it'd be angelspit.net slash ice planet, or you, and then you can like, at a hierarchy slash album slash ice planet or slash projects or slash you know whatever so yes um actually i just bought on the other day i bought ice planet 9000.com um and that re th that's a subdirectory un under angel spit so um you know it's all dns set up and everything but the cool thing about it is when you have that you can also set up emails so i've got zoog at ice planet you know 9000.com brent everybody gets an, an email and it, they're just redirects so if you hit an email there it just pings to whatever you want um grim i see your hand go i would also say yeah in tandem with this is uh you know once upon a time in the land of retail they were talking about different types of customers you know and you got customers that are high touch you got customers that consider something they hold something then they kind of put it down and then they pick it up again and the more likely they are to touch things the more likely they are to maybe want to buy said thing so in the age of everybody having their phone and everybody wanting to do everything ever with their phone like you could be showing them uh, uh you could be showing them a, an animal at the zoo but yet they want to look it up on their phone so uh, all that being said if you have that qr code in front of you if you're doing a a live gig or you just provide them the opportunity to scan a thing more than likely they will scan the thing you know what i mean just yeah. because people want to do they want to keep their hands busy or they already have their phone in their hands so they're going to use it so i would say yeah definitely take advantage of that in any way you could possibly think of because you could be doing your elevator pitch or 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 but in the meantime they could scan a qr code to bring up that website to see, you know, to reinforce what you're talking about. Um, you know, I find it particularly helpful, at least my brain child, my thought process is if I go to horror conventions and I have a table laid out, you know, I can do my elevator pitch. I can, you know, have a blast. I don't need to go eight layers deep into Grimm, but then they could scan the code while they're there and kind of scroll through the main page and see Grim Reaper for Hire you know, and they can go, oh, okay, cool, man. There's like, there, there's a lot of stuff on here. It's just a good reinforcement, you yeah. know, that they could scan that thing while you're talking about it and bring it up. So they have a mental image to pair together and you could do something that catches their eye. Yeah. And having it at the point of sale, because if you give someone, yeah, whatever, if they get it online, yeah, whatever. But if you're in their face, 
giving you the elevator pitch, and by the way, scan this, there is a very high chance they're going to follow up on it. So, yes, these are good. These are good. Put it on a sticker. Give them the sticker. Um, I want to talk about the mechanics of music, unless anybody wants to keep talking about QR codes and stuff like that. So, I just have to say that I am going back to work. <laughs> okay, Mez, always thank you for joining us, and this time next week. Yeah, see you next time. And jump on the Discord. Oh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll find a link. <laughs> um, I have to figure out what the link is, because I'm an idiot, and I can never figure out this bloody thing. <laughs> yeah, if you get a chance, send it to me. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, Diana just said phone. Oh yes, thank you. I see what's going on. Um, so. Phone home. Um, phone home. No, she was, she was pitch correcting. <laughs> ah. There you go. Phone phonetic. I don't know. Um. Anyway. Uh, but, uh, phone is a massively old reference, by the way. ET phone home. That was what eighty four. Yeah. Yeah. It was yesterday. Oh shit. Oh. Yeah. What happened? Uh. <laughs> Um, me and the wife have been doing a Jurassic Park thing. Just on, on the, I forgot how good that movie is. Jurassic Park right? One is brilliant. I just want to just for a minute, because this has got a lot to do with music and storytelling. So Spielberg does this thing about secret boxes. Here's a box. Open the box. What's in the box? <gasps> Something cool and a map to the next box. <gasps> What's in this one? Da -da 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 -da. And that's how he tells the story. But the thing with Jurassic Park is. And he does this with a lot of things, but in Jurassic Park he does it so well, is that when he goes from one story box to the next, there's an insane piece of action, like, iconic. Like, we're going to get out of a tree now, but there's going to be a car chasing us down the tree. Um, it's iconic. And, it, you know, incorporating that sort of idea into your music and your art, it's like, always think about this. Fuck, the guy's a master. Blows my mind. Anyway, I want to talk about the mechanics of a release. Actually, I think Eric did. And John did. Do you guys want to expand on this very exciting question? Uh, Eric, you you actually have something that is more time sensitive. So why don't you go first? All right, thank you. Um, I, we were talking before we went live, and I was just... Um, Oh, I'm going to mess them up again. What is it? ISRP? ICRP? Whatever. Those ISRC. Codes. Thank you. Um, yeah, getting those codes um, is part of it. Uh, how do you go about doing it? Uh, I did it before. I don't remember how I did it because I'm computer illiterate sometimes with stuff like that. Uh, Internet-wise, I can build computers. I like computers, but I'm not an internet, social media. I stay away from that stuff. So, like, where do you find them? How do you go about doing it? I also joined Song Trust. And I don't remember, it was over a year ago and I haven't used it. I don't know if you upload it on there, part of ASCAP, getting into the songwriters um, guild. guild and just questions about all that mechanical stuff. I just put the EP out. I didn't promote it very well. I never do. I need to work on that. Um, but yeah, I have no codes for the songs to, to track, um, you know, how, how many times they're played, where to play in the radio, if they are, uh, what's going on with it. And yeah, just maybe collecting more. Um, royalties from other things outside of distro kid uh, I was reading you know there's a whole bunch of other things that need to collect certain money from other spots that distro kid doesn't collect from and just a whole bunch of stuff like that okay John do you want to hope I covered it but yeah, yeah no that's this this is good this this is an encyclopedia John yeah uh, I'm in a slightly different place I'm uh, finishing up an album's worth of material uh now uh ostensibly a soundtrack for a game but that the game yeah i don't know whether or not it'll come out but for all intents and purposes an album's worth of material so yeah like 40 minutes worth of material um you know it's like it's in you know i've gone through you know it's like done done with production about two-thirds the way through the mix have mastering lined up um and in in kind of like similar place of like okay you know beyond all all the mark liner notes um, you know, there's this is going to be digital only. I have no physical pre presence on this, but um, it's like uh, signing up. Uh, it's like I right now I'm looking at uh, e either like DistroKid or SoundCloud uh, Distro 
um, through my premier uh, subscription plan through that. Um, but like combination of like YouTube uh, IDs for content identification, the uh, ISRC, I believe it, you know the you know getting those code uh, getting those content identifiers. Also, I am not uh, I know very little about ASCAP and uh, kind of like how do I get myself kind of like in the licensing pool um, because like uh, I the type of music that I'm doing is not club or radio friendly but is but I would love it to be in the you know in a place where it can be licensed to be used in part of soundtracks um, for you know video games or short film or even someday you know, like feature films that would you know that is my my particular goals and so yeah going through the mechanics of like what does it take to get your uh, get your art in a commercially ready state okay um th this is a huge this is really good so firstly i will say uh if you're a patreon member and you want isrcs email me and i'll hook you up with some because i am registered as a record label uh, and i can actually generate my own i think i can generate between a thousand and ten thousand a year i'm not sure so yet another reason to follow angel spirits patreon secondly um i highly recommend that you fork out uh, a dollar and get a barcode. So there's places where you can buy barcodes, uh, and I should get my shit together right now. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Uh, where is that? All right, fine. Give me a minute. Barcode, barcodes and UCPs. Okay, you can buy them here. This place. This is just some random commercial place. I'll put this in the in the link in the, in the chat as well. You can buy them in a lot of whole bunch of different places. Um, you've got UP, UPCs and um, barcodes. There's another name for them as well. One's 13 digit, one's 12 digit. If it's 12 digit, you just stick a zero in front of it. There's a European standard and an American standard. Oh, yes, of course there are. Um, buy a barcode. Buy a bunch of barcodes. Uh, Alex, Alex had a question, and I think this is important. Uh, Shoot, you know, Alex. Like you know, it's like, what are these specifically? What is ISRC? Oh, International, Jesus. International Standard Recording Code. It is basically, it's a unique identifier for a piece of work, um, like a song, you know, and a particular instance of a song. A remix of that song would have a different unique identifier. Um, but the original, like, bass song, no matter what platform, you know, all the reporting will come back, you know, to that one particular code. So, like, if there are royalties due on it, for example, or there's reporting, it will be tracked through that unique identifier. Yes. And so we're talking about how to get, you know, get a code so you can associate it with a song and uh, and then with a UPC code that's, um, you know, providing, um, um, that's for, that's for, point of sales for uh would you do that for individual singles or would you only do that for the entire album i did that for the entire album and while we're here i'm just gonna that's what a uh an issc looks like putting it in the chats there um and i can run you through what the hell that means if you want uh what that means is u.s it was in the united states ba uh is um or oh, oh, B6RA uh, is my um, shorthand. This is public information, by the way. A shorthand for my label. They just generated that thing for me. And then 21 is the year. And then there's a number after it. One, two. Yeah, that's 10,000 or is that 100,000? I don't know. It's a fucking lot. Um, so that means that in the United States, Black Pill, Red Pill in the year 2021... Uh, released track number 301. And I think that's a 100,000 or a million. I don't know. I just couldn't be fucked right now with numbers. So if you came to me with a number, I might start you at 10,000 or something. I don't know. But I have to set them aside. I don't have to register them with anything. I just have to set them aside to make sure that I don't give you the same one that I give damage because that would be a fuck up. Or, for, you know, for me. Um... And when you plot patch that number into uh, Bandcamp, because Bandcamp's going to say, what's your ISRC? 
And so will uh, DistroKid and AWOL. They'll want to know your ISRC as well. Boom. There you go. Uh, and, and that will send them off to channels such as, uh, to my understanding, YouTube. I'm a bit slack on this shit because I have, I'm with AWOL. And AWOL are an agitator and they are terrifyingly good. So there's so much stuff here I don't need to worry about. But I do, every time I do a release, I have a barcode or a UPC. Um, and that 13 digit number, which can I give you? I don't know where it is. It's, it's once again, it's public information. Theoretically, if you type that, uh, that you, uh, uh, ISRC into Google, it will hopefully say edge of ruin by angel spit. Although that's still being agitated. Um, as of the 3rd of December, it should say the edge of ruin by angel spit. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah. So the first thing you need, it's like, I'm selling a pair of socks. For that pair of socks in Walmart, you need a, a barcode so they can stick it on the thing so it, there is a unique number for your product. And that product doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. That's why you buy it from these places that sell bar barcodes. And if you buy 20, they should cost about a dollar each. If you buy one, it might be $5 or $10 or something criminal. Um, if I had extra ones, sure, you could buy one off me for a dollar. There goes Shaya. But I don't. But, um, and I also, I think uh, AWOL will set them up. And I think uh, your agitator will assign you one for free. And I think um, Bandcamp does as well. I think, I'm not sure. Okay, Bandcamp does not. But I, I think AWOL and DistroKid will because they have to. Um, so, yeah. Now, the thing to remember that, see, when you have this identifier and you play your music or someone plays your music on Twitch or on, um, can you define AWOL? Okay, AWOL is, um, it's set up by the uh, British Composers Guild. It's like the Navigators Guild where everybody's high on spice and we go through space um, and it's a guild. You know, it's a fucking Composers Guild. Come on. And we wear white and go to these secret uh, meetings like Eyes Wide Shut. And um, it's an agitator, just like DistroKid. And it's hard to get on now because they will only let certain artists in. When I joined, any old riffraff will do. And um, if you're a part of the British Composers Guild, which is similar to ASCAP, or in Australia, it's APRA, the Australian Performing Rights Association, they would recommend that you work with uh, AWOL. So AWOL is just an agitator, and an agitator is just like or The Orchard or Distro Kid. An agitator will take your music for you. It's a service where you pay X amount per year, or they take a percentage cut, and they will throw it out to Spotify, Distro Kid, da, 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 da. Um, they get your um, YouTube. Um, they handle all that bullshit. They uh, handle uh, uh, gathering your funds and all of that stuff. Um, if you can get on AWOL, I highly recommend you do, but it's hard now. Like I said, when I joined AWOL, it was, they'll take anyone, but not so anymore. Um, I still believe they are the best agitator in the world. The second, in my humble opinion, is DistroKid. Um, she is doing weird things, but that's what she does. Um, so the next thing you brought up, John, that I just want to touch on is that, um, I don't know how Twitch works with com with music for games, but I know that Twitch is cracking down like craziness. I'm glad Adam's not here because he'd be getting so angry right now. Twitch, Twitch is e epically cracking down on um, on music. And like I said recently, they stopped me from putting a piece of music up there that hasn't even been registered yet. Or it was registered, but it hasn't gone through the works. There's a way around this called whitelisting. Uh, this is exciting. And whitelisting is when you say to YouTube or, or you go to your agitator and you say, okay, just tell YouTube that um, anything that I do on this channel, which is my channel, don't fucking get in the way of it. Like, don't block it, don't mute it, don't do anything like that. I don't know about whitelisting on Twitch yet. I haven't looked into that. I really should, but I haven't. Um... But it's it's a really big, fun topic. Um, 
so um, Eric, shoot me. <laughs> um, <laughs> ching ching. I was just uh, kind of. <laughs> man, I'm a bad shot. I knew I was. Um, I was. No, I'm a bad to... Wonder Woman. But go right. on. <laughs> I think you'd make a great Wonder Woman. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> um, complete compliment. Um, I was just looking at some stuff, and we're talking about the uh, ISRC co the codes and stuff. Um, apparently, I didn't know this, but DistroKid does give you those codes when you uh, distribute through them. So I just looked at my last EP, and I have a code for each song on there. So DistroKid will assign those codes for you. Bandcamp doesn't, but then you can just copy and paste those into your band. It's never too late to go back and put them into your Bandcamp for each song. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, it's not too late to put the codes in, so it will register. I mean, obviously, it's not going to register the ones that were already played before, but it will probably start to do it. So DistroKid will have, hello, Diana, will have um, those codes for you if you go through them. Yes. Um, so all of this is fantastic, and it brings us up to another point, which is the, the lead-in time. Um, I'm going to make the assumption that you're not pressing a CD and you're not pressing vinyl because, for God's sake, don't press vinyl. Oh, my God. Um, what you really want to be doing is getting your, your album goes to press at least two weeks, even a month before you release. In the olden days, it was three months. Um, you would have everything ready to go three months before you release and you would be dropping a video and promoting and all that, that stuff. Do you remember the Carl's thing about dropping a, a stone in the pond? And it takes, I'm so sorry, one to three months to hit the edge. Here's something really interesting. I think I said this last week. Uh, Black Dog Bite, which is an album I did in 2017, is currently taking off. Or want of a better word, not really taking off. But it's, um, it, people are still discovering it. Uh, and it's currently uh, uh, Satanic Aesthetic, which is one of the lead tracks on that, is um, the most growing Angel Spit album of uh, a track of all time, um, which I find really bizarre. Like still, <laughs> um, but there you go. And it's getting because uh, I with A Wall, A Wall will track whenever something gets added to a playlist or when. This is the great thing about the stats that you get from AWOL or DistroKid or The Orchard, your agitator, is that it's going to tell you age, sex, location of everybody listening to your music. What tracks are going off? What are they? What playlists have they been added to? And it's also really important that you check the back end of Spotify because you're going to learn who your audience are. Um and uh and that information is 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 so oh thank you. Oh, thanks, Alex. Um, thanks a lot, man. I and I, I, I've got your stuff ready for the next one. Um, uh, the next album. Sorry, I, I digress. Um, yeah, I'm proud of that album. I'm really fucking proud of it. Uh, yeah, those that demographic is really important because when you start doing advertising, which you should, <laughs> um, you know who to hit. You know exactly who to hit because your Kickstarter and your playing stats and all of that are saying these are your audience they are in these locations hit them if you're not playing to many females aged between 25 and 35 in italy don't do an ad campaign um, campaign that includes them um hit you know hit your hot centers even go into the united states and predominantly hit centers that are interested in you not a state that doesn't care so um, I, I just digressed there. <clears throat> um, three months out, or even a month out, that's when you want to <coughs> start sending your tracks to people to have it um, reviewed. Getting reviews is hard. It's always been hard. For some reason, it's harder. Um, press are really difficult to deal with. But, you know, if you send me something... I will try and send it out. I will I will try. Um, I think the best thing that we as a group, because all of us are facing this problem together, the best thing that all of us can be doing now is pushing that, obviously pushing MTV TV. Thank you, MTV TV. 
but also pushing that um, uh, the um, Spotify playlist we have. Um, because all of us are always like Ice Planet 9. Dude, we are finding it so hard. I digress. I'm being humble for a minute. Um, uh, Ice Planet 9000 is having a lot of trouble finding its audience. Um, and I knew going into this that it wasn't the same audience as Angel Spit. I knew it was a different audience. With Angel Spit, I can release pe something and people are going to support it. Thank you again. Or even just listen to it. With Ice Planet 9000, we've had to start again from scratch. So all of the stuff we've been talking about here, <laughs> I've been going through going, ah! Um, and we did stuff like, uh, now I'm off topic, I apologize, but you know, we did stuff like, what movies are these people into? What other albums? You know, the thing I, I, I talked about last week where you see your album and then there's two albums on either side of it. We were talking about, you know, who do you actually sound like? We talked about that. Um, and in order to try and find this demographic, which is bloody hard, it's really, really hard. Aaron. I think to that end, uh, if you haven't thought about it yet, just because this is a big think tank thing, uh, you might want to reach out to some D and D type avenues if you haven't, because the storytelling seems very kith and kin with what a lot of people would do with D and D, or Audible. Uh, I mean, I'm only name dropping them because they're prominent and they're stuck in my head. But any kind of audio streaming, because it sounded, at least for me, from the splash that I've seen, it looks very much uh, like it's catered to or designed to be a, in one shade, an audio sa soundscape. You know, I think it lends itself to that. So, yeah, like I said, D and D storytelling, Audible. I think that's a that's a huge. Um, I mean, easier said than done, but I think those those may be prime for what you guys are driving at. Okay, that's great. And I'm going to just throw this out for a conversation because this conversation is something all of us are facing. So how? How do you do that? John, I see your hand. Um, yeah, my, well, my hand is, uh, it's less about how do I do it and, uh, and it was also like just more, you know, distribution platforms like, uh, you know, but specifically, uh, given, given that it's an audio drama, you know, but it has visual pieces of it, um, there is an audience for visual novels um, that have, uh, you know, and there's a whole subgenre of video games that are both, you know, both visual no novels and also kind of like glorified uh, choose your own adventure, you know, it's like where you're presented with you know sometimes you know either just binary choice like left or right kind of thing or it can be uh, a little bit more nuanced but you know it's like there is an actual narrative and uh, and there are many tools that you can use that are off the shelf and free uh for example uh twine uh is an open source system for building you know exactly that kind of like choose your own adventure games where you can you know, very easily, you know, integrate uh, audio visual pieces, you know, parts of it. So you can have ambient sounds, you know, music bed that is playing under it, you know, the narrative is continuing and the player is engaged in making decisions. The scripting language which is not difficult if you have a basic programming background, um, but it's, it's basically a visual interface where you can just type the text and using if you can write HTML, you can write a Twine story, and um, I've I've done it for myself. Uh, use and uh, used a piece that I um, used a piece that I made in another context. So, having something that is built around narrative and already has visual elements of it, you know, it's like it's just kind of an extension. And being able to self-publish it on a on a platform such as Itch, for example, that is. Um, you know, it's like that gives you a greater audience who may not be familiar with it. And so instead of trying to find an ambient electronic art audience when, you know, for somebody who's or somebody who's listening for an audio drama, you know, why not 
across genres and open it up to you know, that, that whole kind of like blue ocean strategy of like go to an area that people aren't fighting over. That's excellent. Um, but what I want to do right now, I've just put two uh, links in there that are really fantastic. They're Facebook groups. Please copy and paste them. Uh, I'm, I'm going to circle back. John, thank you. Uh, the, the first one, those two places are places uh, uh, who are, are putting together podcast talent with podcast people who do podcasts. Uh, be a guest or find a guest. Um, go join them. Uh, check in on them daily because somebody might have something that you could do an angle on. You know? Um, somebody might have something that you can help with. Um, or when you're doing a release, you might drop saying, okay, I've just done a release and I want to do, a th uh, uh, I want to do an interview. But the thing to remember that when you do an interview like that, um, you, you need, you know, you've got to have a, uh, a twist. You, you've got to have a, a spin. You've got to have something that press people want. Um, Hey, I'm talking about uh, uh, getting through, making your art happen in, in uh, while going through uh, something. I don't know. Uh, I'm shooting the shit right now. But, you know, that's the sort of thing they want because they want content uh, that's got a, um, you know, that's got a point. Not, hey, man, I'm running a, I did an album and I want people to watch it. People don't give a shit. You know, you've got to have a, I'm sorry, again? What's the hook? What's the twist? What's, what's the, the hook? Angle? Yep. What's the angle? Um, now, it's also really important that um, all of these ideas are great, brilliant ideas that everybody's put in. But the core thing that I keep coming back to is how do you reach those people? Now, there's a little thing here to as a reminder is that as a creative who has one, you're the one person either in a band or the one person in general, and you're the one person making it happen between marketing, eating, sleeping, don't forget that one, doing another job, making more creative stuff, da 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 da. How do you reach the audience? And the answer I'm looking for does not involve, oh, we'll set up this completely new thing in order to do them. No. Um, it, it, it comes down to having a strong bio, a strong press release, etc. That's great. But how do you hit them? And this is something that I, I either I think I have a problem in my communication when I say to creative people, how do you hit them? How do you engage them and get them interested in what you're doing? People just don't seem to understand that what, what I'm saying there. They come up with these airy-fairy fucking things. I don't care. How do you make a sale? How do you get your audience? So, because this is something, and, and, and I don't mean to diss anything anybody else has ever said, but this is the core thing that every single creative person has problem with. You get 10 plays a, a month on, on Spotify or under 100. How do you make that 1,000? How do you do it? <clears throat> One suggestion is we have this amazing Spotify playlist already. Uh, here it is right here. Boom. There it is. Look, I just put in the thing again. Um, you pimp that every week. And all of us pimp that every week. We, we, we pimp it every week to try and get people, because I still need audience, you still need audience. All of us need audience. People who are into your band haven't heard of me yet. Ditto. That's one suggestion. More. There needs to be more suggestions. And don't worry about Ice Planet 9000, because it is literally on another planet. It's dark, um, uh, ambient music. Don't worry about it. I want to talk about you. I want to talk about your music. Do you hit Reddits? And if you hit Reddit, what pitch do you take? Like if you go, hey man, go listen to my band. Trust me, it doesn't work. They don't care. Um, 
and even if you come up with the coolest video in the world, I was going through all of my really cool videos, it's like, man, those plays are awful. Then I look at some other band that does a video that is nowhere near as cool as mine, I think, and there are 10 times more plays than mine. That's not a bitch, it's just, hey man, I get it, it's life. There's something in the big picture here that I'm missing, but this isn't about me, it's about us, it's about you. What do you do? Come on, you're composers, you're creatives. This is marketing. Get creative. I can tell you what's not working. Tell me. Yeah, um, I mean, it's like it works to an extent, but like, you know, the, uh, I am part of artist collectives like this one, and there's another one called Lines, which is focused more on ambient music. And, uh, and honestly, like the music that I post through that uh, as part of like, you know, weekly contests or just like, comp or not even contests, but just like jams gets more views than anything else. And if anything, like it's building an audience and a brand, but it is also, um, but it is, the, and similar to this group, it's artist to artist. So it works to an extent. I'm growing my knowledge, I'm growing my network, but it is, and it is growing my audience, but in very small steps, it is not breaking out to your point. Can I? So, oh, sorry, go ahead. Can I ask Limes? What was that collective called? Limes. I'll post the link. And it yeah. it was it's dark EBM stuff you said or it's no ambient. All right. All right. All right. Um, also, if you uh, if you want to get your modular on, that is a wonderful place to go. Uh, it is a very very awesome tight knit community, well moderated, very polite, um, you know, professional, you know, an excellent place. Unlike uh, Reddit. Um, Reddit can be accessible. Oh, um, can be. <laughs> No, this is good. Thank you, John. This is great. Um, Daryl, I see your hand. What thoughts are you having? Uh, I know you've been involved with it before, Carl. Um, what about getting involved in something like Virtual Temple or some sort of like a, one of those large collaborations just to get it's the same kind of sound that you're going for, but it's like, like, it's a, it's a, like, like almost like a uh, virtual music festival, pretty much. I found a lot, I found a lot of bands through Temple and a lot of other things like that. So that could be an idea too. That's a great idea. Uh, and I thank you for that. So what I want to do then is just throw it back to the other artists. Um, how can we... Because I do appreciate that. It, this is not too much about me and what I'm doing. I want to I wanna pull some people up the ladder here. So you guys who are at uh, a, a, a lower rung than me, I hate fucking saying that. What what how can how can we uh, utilize something like virtual temple which is amazing can you do live shows because you know daryl you're absolutely right you know the age old thing of rock and roll is tour or tour or tour or play 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 and if you can't get out of your bedroom then stream from your bedroom can you stream can you do a live show daryl go and um, I'm sure we, we talked about this before too. Is the fact of like you know touring is a pain in the ass. Everything was like even just opening for other people for the same kind of sound. Because I've found people like touring with Voltaire or something like that, and like I'm, usually I find people I like better that are opening for them, and I started following them too. So that's another thing to think about. I know, like I said, like we talked about touring sucks, and you like, sometimes make no money, but at the same time, it's like that's still your audience and. Even if you work for nothing, like that, that, that could turn into something along the uh, down the road. For sure, um, and that also brings in a conversation about how good it is to, I think personally, buy onto a tour. And I still think, if I could go back in time, I would say buy onto fucking tours. Um, so, all right. So my first thoughts are, um, yes, play live, and have something crazy for a live show, um, and even if that's a stream. To do a stream, that's bloody awesome. Something I am really already building the framework for, but not ready to talk about yet. Thank you, Diana. You can do an insane stream on three feet by three feet on your floor, in the corner, because remember, there's not a lot of wall space, there's not a lot of anything space, so it's easy to light. 
So you can project onto yourself and do all sorts of things and do a whole bunch of crazy fucking shit um, on a small space. Because this is the internet and the, the rules are new. So that's that's a strong idea and then and there are a whole bunch of um open mic sessions on zoom get your chops up to speed get a twitch get your youtube going stream to twitch youtube and facebook start do it even if it's one or two songs do it and you cut loose you cut loose like no one is watching and you don't care cut sick is Carl's humble opinion on that. Um, Grim, I see your hand. Two songs. So he needs two. two songs. Go. Uh, and consistency. That's a huge thing. Uh, I got a buddy. He's one of my best friends in the whole world, but he keeps dreaming and you know, having aspirations of, I want to get a gaming channel going. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to Twitch. I want to Twitch. And he kept saying, I'm not, I don't have an audience. I was like, of course you don't have an audience. Because they don't know when the fuck you're going online, you know? Something as rudimentary as, hey, every Thursday, 7 p.m., I'm doing a thing. Come hell or high water, 7 o'clock, Thursday, doing a thing. If two people show up, cool. If 12 do, cool. If nobody does, who gives a shit? But the point is, you got to say the day before, hey, on Thursday, I'm doing a thing. And then, hey, it's Thursday. Guess what? It's early Thursday, but at 7 p.m., I'm doing a thing. And by the way, come join me every Thursday because I'm doing a fucking thing. Like something as, 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 as simple as that, like has to be done. Like you have to be the person to consistently, even if you feel like you're beating somebody over the head, whatever, they can tune up their settings or notifications. That's on them. But the point is, yeah, you got to have something consistent to build or, you know, or word of mouth, somebody could recommend, you know, hey, man, you got to check out this thing on Twitch because every Thursday, the, you know, this this guy's playing this music or this person is doing this thing. Um, yeah. Consistency. I absolutely agree. Um, I totally agree. And this brings into another point, like, you know, if every Thursday, for example, you might be doing a live set every second week. Tune in this week. We're going to do a live set. Tune in next week. I'm going to talk about fucking space or whatever. Um, because we're living in a day and age now when... Oh, I'm going to be DJing. Um, which brings in a lot of problems I don't want to talk about right now. Um, we're living in a day and age where your face on the screen is part of your product. Blah, blah, blah. So do it. Um, they are... A lot of times they are events on Facebook. Let me see if... Thank you, Diana. Um, it's something that really gets me is that, you know, even if it's two people, you got to keep doing it. Um, and, and that's that's what really hurts is that you've got to do this for yourself and it has to be a fun thing. And, you know, if you rely on the audience watching you, it could be problematic. And if you rely on their interaction, if no one's watching you, there's no interaction and you don't have a show. Alex. Yeah, just on that, um, just remember that even the greatest bands have played to ma maybe five people in the beginning. Plus, if you're doing a live stream, just get your friends on. Just ask, the, ask your friends, hey, has anybody time to watch me so I don't hover at one, uh, at zero viewers because that's the biggest hurdle. If people see there's interaction, they naturally engage more and so. So yeah, that's really important. And also, if Alex, absolutely true. And you know what, Daryl, what you guys are all saying and, and Graham, it's so true. Um, I've lost bloody Eric. Um, if you're doing these live shows, uh, once you've done a live show and you've recorded it because you can record stuff on OBS, Stripe it with the final music from, from, from the song and turn it into a video clip. Then send it to MTV TV. Bam, you've got a video clip. God, I wish I'd listened to my own, own advice. Um, the other problem is time. But you're going to get a lot more time in your life if you stop watching dumb shit on TV. Fucking flush your Netflix account and all of that bullshit. Because you're going, yeah, and watch MTV TV. In fact, look, no offense, don't watch MTV, MTV TV. Make content for MTV TV. 
Um, because the whole problem is that it is all about your distraction. Wow, there are so many Angel Spit songs about that right now. Um, all they want is your attention and the wolves pay big so they can steal it. Staring into the hypnotic eye for hours. It sucks out your energy, distracts you with dumb shit. Um, yeah, fuck you, fuck, fuck you, Disney. Uh, this is the whole thing, is that the wolves are stealing your attention. Um, with this stupid shit. This dumb fucking shit. The universe has gifted you with the ability to make music and art. And the problem is you are being discouraged, A, by all these people who are getting millions and millions of views. And B, oh, there's something really cool. I want to watch The Mandalorian. Fuck off. That's bullshit. Fuck off. Don't watch that dumb shit. Make your shit. It's the whole fucking problem. Oh, and we got got uh, group mic sessions coming in. This is good. So, that's what you need to do. That was good. There's, there's, there's some really excellent shit coming on here. And then you got to do it. And the trick with doing it is turn off the telly. Because it's a drug. It's an opiate that makes you feel okay. Everything is okay. Just watch the fucking television. Oh, you can't watch it. You can't do it. Watch a YouTube video. Oh, wow. Three hours later, I'm watching alien conspiracy videos. That's just me anyway. And things about the fucking Emacs. And yeah, I know. I know. I could have picked you. Um, fucking dumb shit. Stop watching dumb shit. It is wasting your fucking life. Do your fucking thing. You know, nobody lies on their deathbed going, man, I wish I watched more stupid shit on Netflix. No one. They all say, God damn it, I, I wish I wrote my 10th album. Why 10th? I didn't even do one album. God damn it. Um, cancel your subscriptions. Go on. And then give me more money in a fucking Patreon and give fucking MTV more money in their Patreon. We could fucking use it. We're artists who are struggling. Eric, go. So coming from somebody me who liked playing live shows uh. um the pandemic kind of obviously shut that down for musicians and really made us struggle more um i don't know how comfortable i am playing uh by myself doing a live stream uh are there suggestions maybe of how to go about starting that yeah um throw yourself in the deep end and if you don't know what you're doing, you actually have a strength. Um, because if you watch a whole bunch of uh, streams and go, I'm going to do that, I think that's the worst thing in the world to do. Because I don't mean to sound like a bastard, but there's a lot of crap streams out there. Like, real crap streams where people just don't give a shit. Um, it's you, the camera, and anger. And that's fucking it. Um, that's why I put my, the microphone, I put it on the, on the, on the fucking, uh, mic, uh, the camera goes on the microphone, so I can swing the damn thing around. Remember, you're playing on an area which is three feet by three feet. Um, clear a room in, area in front of your room, you don't have to play your synthesizers, no one cares. The cool thing about, um, this is a new era. It is a new era in live entertainment. You are writing the rules. You are changing the rules. You are breaking the rules. You are fucking the rules. And the more you break those fucking rules, the more people are gonna like it. Because people are bored. Look at the shit they're fucking shoving down your throat on Netflix. Look at it. It's derivative crap. People are bored. These people are fucking punk rockers who want to smash chairs and throw things out the fucking window. And they're feeding us this bullshit. No. Motherfucker. You put a, you, you put a projector up against your wall or put a TV up against your wall. If you want to watch a good stream, watch The Liar. Watch what Basement Labs do. Holy fuck. It's changing the goddamn game what those guys are doing. With OBS, you can um, uh, uh, have a screen, uh, have a play against a white wall and say, I'm going to mask out everything that's white 
and I'm gonna uh, superimpose over it a la green screen. You can burn into it. You can do all of these visual effects. I always use Liquid Sky because it's the greatest movie ever made. God damn it, it's such a great movie. And I paste that over the top. Then I get a whole bunch of Angel Spit stuff. Then I get a whole bunch of stuff that the Basement Labs did. Paste it over the top of what you're doing. And it might be you going like this in front of a white screen, but once all of this shit's going on, it's madness. Then get the camera, put it on your microphone. Like these crap cameras can cost 20, 40 bucks. And then you can get a, uh, an arm that connects to your microphone. It, that costs another 20 bucks. So for like a hundred bucks, you've got this live thing where you can just go nuts. Um, go nuts. You have nothing to lose. The worst thing that can happen is you can, you can be mediocre. That's the worst thing. But be crazy. Go on, live a little. Um, two songs, Eric, that's all you need. So get a song. And I, I put up Hell, uh, uh, Hell Carousel, was it? Death Carousel? Hell Carousel? Hell Carousel. Thank Fucking you, great track it. from the new EP. Great track. Pick it. Two tracks off that new EP. Two tracks. Rehearse them live, then do them. You have... And, and you fucking go. You do it like Uncle Trent would do it in Night March of the Goddamn Pigs. That's what you will... See. He did that against the fucking white wall and, and roving cameras. And now it's just you, so fucking do it. Alex, I see your hand. I'm getting to you. I'm on a rant. I'm on a I'm very caffeinated rant right now. Great coffee. Um, so, and then when you do it a week or two weeks later, keep the best song you did and throw in another song. Then do the song you did the other week and then throw in another song. And after a month, you've got like half a set. So after two months, you could go on to uh, Virtual Temple or any of these things that are going on and present a show. You could present a live show, record it and send it to MTV TV because I think the word is they, they do play live shows. And like I said, you've got a whole bunch of shit there for videos. You don't have to edit the fucking thing. This is goddamn punk rock. Take the, the, the visuals of you going stupid crazy and then replace it with the final audio. Bam. Um, Alex... Talk to me, Alex. Sorry, I lost my mouse. Uh, yeah, to what Eric was asking, um, I've heard that some people just put some um, uh, stuffed animals in a corner and sort of treat them as the audience, or they had like printed out faces and used them as an audience to relate to. And also, if you have like supportive friends or maybe maybe your significant other, maybe they can. Um, be the audience for that and also maybe handle chat while you're performing oh wow okay i'm gonna pick up on that having a moderator to handle the chat is really important diana is actually the best moderator in the business um so talk to her um another thing is that the funny thing about playing live is that there's an audience and because of the smoke and the, 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 the everything in a, in a club and the mayhem, you can't really see their eyes. Like you can't see their eyes. Um, and a lot of people get nervous. So a trick is you, 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 you aim across the audience and you, you play to the exit signs. A lot of people do that. Play to the air and every now and then eyeball someone. And, but this is, you know about live, you're a fucking monster live with, um, with a stream, you look down the barrel of that camera. Like you look down into that blackness and you focus your eye not on the on the top of the lens, about an inch behind the lens. Right into that lens. Because that lens is, it can be a more uh, uh, real connection than anything else. Like, you know, I'm shooting my mouth off and we've had a bit of a connection today. You can, you can achieve the same thing. Focus. Focus. Beam positivity. Um, Alex, your hand. Okay, that's Alex gone. Um, so that was a great rant. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's my advice. Throw yourself in the deep end. You have nothing, 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 nothing to lose. And... Turn off the fucking TV. My God. And on that, I'll just say, me and the wife are doing these cryptogram puzzles. 
you know, you know those things like they'll have a word, like they'll have a sentence, a quote, and it's in like uh, they they jumble up all the letters, and the letters are like responding to other letters. They're fantastic, and I have a real problem with brain fog. I think a lot of people I've spoken to have had pandemic brain fog issues. This shit clears it up real fast, and they're really they're very hard because I'm an idiot, but they're fun. I mean, she just goes through them like that, but they're real. Yeah. Um. Okay. Get it. Get get these cryptograms. They're really excellent, and they help your they help your brain stay sharp. I mean, like, man, and I find myself I'm sleeping better and everything because I'm going to bed with my brain active and alive. They're fantastic. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Um, Alex, I see your hand again. Yes, uh, again, some advice. I'm not fo following myself, but try to, uh, I think with those streaming things, it's good to remember that you get better at them if you do them more. So if you were like totally uh, can't focus in the first at the first time, just do it more maybe once every week and you will get better. Like if you watch the first live streams of some big streamers, they're like, horrible in comparison so keep that in mind yeah and this is your mantra i suck i don't fucking care i suck i don't fucking care i suck i don't fucking care eric yeah thank you all that's that's fantastic advice um one of my my biggest problems like when you go live with an audience it's a different rush you know it's and i enjoyed it it's like you go on stage and like we were talking about the other week, you fuck up, you put it in the show, you don't let anybody know. It's easier for me. Like you're on that and your adrenaline's going. Doing something in live in front of a camera or something, or even pre recorded and doing it is for me mentally, it's just like that block. But this is great advice. Thank you. Um, uh, and one of the things with me is like you're saying, Alex, too. And yeah, you look at like those old streamers and you see how much they get better. I'm such a perfectionist with things I need to do. I need to, like, in my head, I'm like, I need to go on here and just, I need to be spot on first time and i know that's not the case but like that's like a mental block for me of trying to get like i know it's not going to be the best and who cares and honestly like it's one of those back and forth battles in my head of like yeah i really don't care i just want to do it but i want to be the best i can and as you yeah. said before too you know finish is better than perfect just go do it but yeah i'm gonna give it a go thank you thank you can i can i just jump in before you grim um it's really interesting about the, the pre-stage rush for a real show and the pre-stage rush, or I should say a physical show versus a virtual show. And Grim, I am going to throw it to you. I, 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 um, it's really interesting that I find that there is a rush. It's a different kind of rush, but there is a rush. And there's a solidarity when you're doing a... Because um, every time I do a show, it's with people. So it's, I'm going to, someone's go, doing their set and someone's like, the, the, when you do like a virtual temple or something, it's awesome because you're, um, yeah, I miss them too. But it's just that the upload here is terrible. That's why I've, I've, I've got to figure this shit out. Um, you know, when, when you're doing one of these virtual shows and you, you're talking to Diana and you're watching the Twitch and you're watching each band and then you're talking to Ryan, uh, who's the guy, the streaming guy. He's the best, best, best streaming guy there is as far as putting these thongs and, and, and making them work. And then you get that text and, and Ryan's counting you in. You got five minutes. They're finishing up. And he said, as soon as you get this uh, text, count backwards from 10 and you're live. And you get a rush. Because Twitch is telling you how many people are watching that show. And you've made all, all the little data connections have happened and da 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 da, -da and you're, you're streaming to everybody and everyone hearing him. And it's the most exciting fucking thing. It's really fun. Um, so it's it's a different kind of rush. I should do more shows. I just froze. Seriously. Uh, if anybody, uh, Grim, I can hear you. Some web issues. Shoot, baby, hit me. Anyone? I can still hear you. All right, great. Oh, um, I was Grim, just going to say, there's... Ah, oh, floor is yours, Grim. <laughs> uh, whatever.
whatever. Uh, I just do like quick and dirty editing because I want to get something out there. But I know that I can add a finer polish to something if I wanted to put it on another, uh, you know, stream or venue or whatever. But I'd say, yeah, there there definitely is that solidarity, as Carl said, with you know, with live streams and you know, people just you know, they're kind of holding the torch for each other. It's not. You know, oh, I'm gonna judge you so fucking harsh on this. Live is live. I mean, things happen. You know, uh, you might have happy little accidents or people in the chat jumping in, but you know, it's usually positive. Um, and I'd also say, in a weird way, as far as inspiration, watch some live videos from like Mindless Self Indulgence because they really just truly don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, I think their stocks are negative <laughs> in the fucks department. <laughs> But in a weird way, it's kind of funny because he's just like, I don't give a shit, you know? This is where I'm starting. And if you don't like it, you can fuck off, you know? It's like, you know, we're here to rock and we're here to do a bunch of crazy shit. And their live show is just, like, all over the place. So, if anything, I'd just say, yeah, definitely just have some fun with it and just know that there doesn't have to be the finest of fine polish or a veneer on it, um, you know, because you're – you're you're building and garnering support for a live uh, avenue and not everybody's a master at that and even people that have a really good live presence uh, i'll i'll say to to put a short button on it think about space couch as much as i love watching space couch every now uh, space couch every now and again you get this weird distortion but brian handles it like a pro to where he's like fuck it there's distortion because we we're in space, in space. <laughs> you know <laughs> so yeah just take it in stride and just know it doesn't have to be the most polished of polished things I, I would definitely if i would add any encouragement and a lot of people find that actually kind of endearing with the live stream live stream because they're all pulling for you you know they're like all right man as soon as this fucking distortion clears or as soon as you know this thing stops being a little wackadoo as soon as they hit their stride you know like this is going to kick some ass and it usually does thank you doctor um, Eric, your hand is still up. Yeah, I just wanted to add something else into this. Um, well, questions, suggestions. Um, I was never, you mentioned before too, and I know I notice a lot more people do this now, is record a live session and then they put their finished track over it um, and put it out. And uh, I know MTV TV has a couple videos like that. And I was always, it was never my thing. I, saw, I used to see that stuff when I was younger and be like, man, just do it live. Uh, and now I think I'm starting to understand better with the camera. Like it might be more difficult, maybe opinions or feelings about, of, of doing stuff like that and putting it out like a pre-recorded live thing with your finished songs over it. Because like we've talked about before too, people like to hear the CD, you know? So no. if you have the final track on it and you're doing it live, you're still performing, you know, live and then putting the track. So like people are going to hear the CD. They're going to hear that track, how it's finished, which is what people really like. Um, What's, yeah, versus what is it? Um, okay. Uh, what I want, can I come back to that? Uh, uh, cause I see John and Alex as well. So I want to, you, John, jump in, then you, Alex, and then, then I want to hit you again. Uh, Eric, just remind me, go, John. Thanks. Uh, yeah, two, two points, um, that I want to make. Uh, like one on, uh, you know, live, live experiences, like the, the adrenaline rush is real um you know it's like going on to a stage but even like you know it's like you're setting up for a performance and knowing that people are watching you is like that do, that does transform the performance and people do feed into that energy one of the disadvantages of uh being live um you know uh in in a, in a virtual space is that you know the audience energy hits way different like you know it's like are, if you're paying attention to performing you're uh like other than like maybe like looking at a chat stream like you know, you don't you get the same type of feedback as when you people are literally in front of you and you can see what they're doing if they're wandering away getting a drink you know doing whatever you know it's like so it's but knowing this is just sheer volume i'm like hey 50 people are watching right now it's like fuck yeah okay cool you know it's like i can two people are working it do the do the frank zappa thing where like you know frank zappa mother's invention would tour and uh, they played every show, regardless of how many people. They would play shows of one because this show is for you. Thank you for being here. You are appreciating our art. We are going to play this for you. And that's how you make it like, 
that's how you make a fantasy life. And then the other the other thing that I wanted to uh, touch on uh, with the practicing thing um, is like, you know, sucking at something is the first step of getting sort of kind of good at something. You know, just the pure fact that you're doing it means you're doing it. There will always be a first one. You know, when you cook, you make pancakes, for example, first one is going to be awful. And it's like covered in oil. And like, and then after that, like everything's like, you've gotten it dialed in and you have, you know, get that out of the way. It's okay to fuck up. It's, it, you know, what's more important is that you're doing it. Uh, the final final piece of it is um, something I've been doing in November, which I don't recommend for everyone unless you're a masochist, uh, is November beat where I'm making a piece of music every day there. And that, that's basically like the rules. Like, how long is it? Like, as long as you want, it can be, I can be one note, I, but I do more than that. Um, uh, and I've had to optimize, you know, my process in order to stay sane and to be able to get things out on a deadline. Uh, some of it is like absolutely fantastic. Some of it is kind of shite, it, you know, but like the pure, but it, what matters more is that I'm practicing and doing it on a regular basis. I know Carl, for a long time, you did Saturdays, like basically going to church and practicing and also like having the Patreon, which is my, uh, another mouth to feed where you're generating content for that. And there is a, that goal. The act of creating is fun. You can make it a chore, but like the more you do it, the easier it gets. And same same with live performances. Like, you know, if anything, like if you haven't formed in front of a live audience before doing it virtually, you know, uh, you know stage fright in, when you can't see an audience is a is very real. The first time I was on a national public radio station, I realized I was addressing 50,000 people at one time it was kind of scary. And it was like, they can't see me. All right, cool. Just do your best. You know, and I stumbled and I just did it, but you just, just get through it because like what the pure, the pure fact that you're actually doing it, people will not remember the mistakes as much as they will remember your reactions to the mistakes. So just roll with it. Um, building on what Grim said, what, building what Alex said, building on what Carl said. Like, just like, just do it and have fun with it. Because that's why we were doing it, right? And money. But. Have fun. Critically important. Drake, re uh, welcome. Alex, what you got? Uh, yeah, just to quickly address what Eric said. Um, I'm a really an ideologue concerning this, but I think I would try to make it clear that this is not a live performance, but a live performance with the finished track show. So I would maybe cut it up with different live performances or intercut with other um, clips of some sort. That's what I would do. Cool. Thank you. Um, Eric, can you remind me, what was the question? Um, I remember. Okay. Um, so what I used to do uh, is I would record everything on my Zoom recording device you know, not the Zoom that we're talking on now, but, you know, the uh, a mobile recording device. I couldn't do it on my computer because my computers were just chucked up with everything. Like, this dude is fo focusing on the music. This dude is focusing on the streaming. Um, uh, and I did that whole thing on, on fucking uh, live streaming, the two videos on live streaming. I will get them to you very shortly. Um, yeah, so I... Um, and then what I would do is I would uh, I'd take the Zoom recording, clean it up a little, and that just means mastering it, uh, and getting rid of the noise because my system has a lot of noise. And then I would replace the old audio track with the new, with the actual Zoom recording. Uh, and it's really interesting that whenever I do stuff on OBS, there's a delay. And I don't mean from me to the server. I mean from my mouth. The mouth and the eyes are out. It's out of sync. It just might be me. I don't know what it is. It might be my system. And it's out by like an eighth of a second. It's like you can see it. Um, so that's why I do it. Um, plus the audio recording quality out of OBS I personally think is crap. Um, and for me it's mono. Because mono is a faster stream. Uh, as opposed to stereo, but so I'll upload something that's stereo. Um, uh, that's that's my brain working or not working. I just don't know. I'm going to try and get you those things. Now, were there anything else that you wanted to ask to 
um, to solidify this epic epicness? Actually, maybe throwing in with um, just going in OBS with, with people. I've never used any of that that software. I've never broadcast anything. I don't know even how I would set up to start with that. Um, I know I can I can Google it and I can find answers and stuff. But are there any suggestions of or preferences of a live stream um, app or software or anything? Um, I see Jake Drake's hand. Hey, yeah, I've been ghosting you guys uh, all morning. Um, I'm actually, it, this, this topic is like right on point because I've been asked to do um, a pre-record, which is going to be like a live stream thing. Um, and I can put together uh, three songs and contribute to it. So I'm setting up a green screen back here and kind of transforming my space. Um, I know my uh, the colors are kind of messed up right now. But um, yeah, I'll be using OBS, uh, Eric, to record that. Um, OBS is open source. Probably know that it's free download. Um, in terms of like streaming over Twitch, it's as simple as getting a URL and pasting it into that software. Um, and in that software, you can do all kinds of things like adding effects, overlays, um, you know, doing chroma keying so that you've got stuff bleeding into the background. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a real struggle like getting uh, getting your stuff out there and being heard. So it's like you know, networking and finding opportunities to put your stuff out there. Um, this is Live Evil Productions. A friend of mine, Sean Beasley, um, who's putting together this live stream. Um, really, really awesome guy. Um, sort of connections out in Ontario way. Uh, but yeah, I, I this whole COVID pandemic bullshit, um, I haven't performed anything for my last album. And this opportunity has come along and it's like, I'm sick of all the old songs. <laughs> I don't want to play any of them. So I'm, I'm uh, getting my ass together and um, solidifying three new tracks that I'm going to do. And because it's a pre-record, I'm going to record um, one of myself doing it live. And then I'm going to do another one where I'm like, just kind of like dancing around and doing messed up shit with my mask on. And I'm going to do like a, a flipping back and forth, um, almost like a strobing effect going back and forth between the two. Um, video feeds and of course because it's pre-record i can record it as many times as i want and perfect it um yeah so carl what you're saying about like not watching tv and shit i mean like when i have time like this morning i have to make like the best use of my time and coming in here is typically the best use of my time today it's like i'm gonna fucking set up my my live stream environment and uh listen to what you guys have to say so i'm really grateful to all of you that's all I got. Good on you, Drake. Um, and just before I throw to you, thank you again. Uh, before I throw to you, Alex, I just copy and pasted the two blipverts that I did on live streaming. Um, I also put them in the chats. So go on over there and have a look. Um, Alex, what you got? Yeah. Um, uh, use uh, in, in uh, regards to streaming software, use OBS or not uh, the one from Streamlabs. Uh, they are different. Um, there was recently a scandal with Streamlabs, but just use the vanilla OBS. It's the better one. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you guys. OBS, all the way. Shit you can do on OBS is madness. Absolutely madness. And because it's open source, you know, there's this thing called Ninja, OBS Ninja, where you give your phone a URL, you just go there and you click OK, and uh, your phone will become a camera. So it will send via, it will upload whatever's going on to this server, and that server will 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 send it to your OBS. So you can set up as many freaking cameras as you want from your phone. Um, it is so fast, and it, it it's like because it's peer to peer, really 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 fast. Um, and it's it's like really low bandwidth chug. You know, I have an old XL. Uh, you know DSLR camera over there and I use that as one of my cameras yeah um, you can use that as a as a camera um, you, you can use it as a camera capture device so much you can do with OBS uh, it's insane it's insane um, when when you see go on twitch and you see these really complicated twitch people that's all OBS you can be pulling your latest subscribers and all of this stuff and dumping it in little windows everywhere. It's madness. 
and you can be doing overlays and endless fun. So yeah, I say OBS. Um, does anybody else have a question about this? Because this started with how the hell do you reach people? And it's, it's actually become something very positive. Um, and if anybody doesn't have... Okay, thank you. I I'll just ask if anybody has any in insight to ambience, like ambient music, dark ambient music, do me a favor. I'd like to ask about it. John, because I know you did, but before we talk about that, Alex, what you got? I, w I would have another question if we have time. Yeah, hell yeah, not, let's go. Not the one with the cleanest answer, but um, uh, also, um, how do you get over those like brain gremlins that I, I hope I didn't ask this pre before, but the, um, like your self doubt and um, the problem if you hear yourself and you're not content with your hearing that it sort of destroys you and how do you ignore that and keep on going? Do you have some hacks? I know the best way probably is just do it more and it will go away, but on the way there, do you have any ideas? Yeah, bad news is they don't go away. Um, in fact, they get worse, I think. Sorry. Um, I found that um, I've put these brain gremlins, I like that, brain gremlins. Um, I've put it down to access energy. And if there's too many brain gremlins, it's because I'm caffeinated. I've had too much sugar. There are reasons that my engine, my body, my bio engine is creating too much energy and I'm trying to find an outlet for them. Um, uh, you just have to ignore them and think of them like it's a wild horse and you have to utilize their energy. So that little thing can be going, you suck, you suck, everything you do is crap, everything you do is crap, you suck, you're a joke, stop now, you're a joke, you suck. Because that's what mine are like, and that's what everybody else's is like too. Every single one of us. It's energy. Utilize the energy. Um, and I've, you know, it's funny, man. If I have them, I've learned I'm on the right path. Like, the more, the louder they yell at me, the better it is. You can't release this. It's shit. People are going to hate. Are you out of your fucking mind? All right, cool. Something good's going on here. I'm doing something good. Um, so they're like little pointers who don't want you to get there. Isn't that fucked up about humans? What you got, Eric? Yeah, I agree with Carl 100%. Unfortunately, Alex, I don't know if they're ever going to go away. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, too, and I've had them since I was a teenager, and <laughs> it, they're still there. Um, what I like to do now, actually, and I don't know if anybody's seen the movie Luca, but uh, fantastic film, Pixar film, um, but there's a great catchphrase now. It's caught on, and I do it all the time. It's Silencio Bruno, and it's silence, fear, like, shut up, jump on it, and just go. Go for the ride. And I got to take that own advice, actually, for trying to do the live streams, you know, digitally. Um, so it's Silencio Bruno. Silence and and go, because it's not going to go away. Um, and that's one of the, the things I miss about doing live shows is uh, that aspect goes away so fast for me doing it that way. Like, if you're sitting here and you're recording or you're trying to maybe do a live stream from here, like, you get those self-doubts. And I think it's harder to get those away. Or as a live performance, you, you, they're gone. Like you get that up, and it's like, man, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. I'm gonna forget my lyrics. Uh, all the doubts and all those gremlins come into your head. But then once you hit the stage, that there, you can't stop. There's people there. It's, you just gotta go full force. Yeah. So it is more difficult to do it, you know, from a live stream or in the house. It's just maybe putting yourself into like, like you were saying before, have somebody pictures and 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 puppets and animals or whatever as the audience maybe that'll help jog it brilliant man thank you grim uh this definitely starts with a film approach but i think it applies to music as well a movie is not a movie until it comes down to the edit i, I don't give a fuck what you think your favorite movie is da -da 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 -da. Usually it's not like, oh, the director and their most grand vision ever made the best thing in the history of whatever. Martin Scorsese has had the same editor for like 30, 40 years. What I'm getting at is 
all of this raw footage, this film of like us being on a Zoom chat right now, you might not like the lighting or the audio quality or, 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 but editing can make it fucking amazing, right? So that's when you play with the contrast or you mess with the look or you add a little bit, you know, you can make it crop it down. You can make it more succinct. But where it applies to the music aspect is, yeah, at first you're going to be like, I don't like my voice. That's grating. I don't know. No, don't like it. And you're sitting with it and you're dwelling with it. But if you keep in the back of your mind going, you know what? When I start editing this, when I start chopping this, when I add my snares and my, you know, and all of this vicious sonic chaos to it it's going to fucking rock like, cause you know it. And especially if you've established, you know, if you've got a few tracks that you've loved in the past that you've created, think about the fact that you've already got those, you know what I mean? They're in the pocket. You've already done this. So if I were to be encouraging, I would say it comes together in the edit. It comes together in the composition. No one thing sounds amazing by itself. If you're bashing the fucking top of a stovetop pan, it probably doesn't sound good in and above itself. But if you add that bass riff and that guitar shred and you add strings and you add all of those things that you love, that one single thing becomes increasingly awesome. So, yeah, don't get hung up. Don't get hung up on, on the voice thing. Just being like, you know what? It comes together in the edit. All of these pieces come together and it's going to kick ass. So, yeah, I agree with Carl. Yeah, uh, excessive energy and caffeine and shit. Yeah, it's rough. It gets real rough real quick. But, yeah, it comes together in the edit. Yeah, it's a drug. Um, but yeah, so just, you've got to go through with it, man. you just got to keep going. Um, I, you know, there is a thought that, you know, there is a God inside you that's trying to break through this thing. And these voices of evil are trying to suppress that God. Um, and they're going to do everything they can to, to hold you down. I don't know where they come from. I think we invented religion thousands and thousands of years ago to try and deal with this problem because it's been going on in the human psyche for a trillion years. John? Hey, um, I wanted to uh, give another concrete example of uh, movies that are drastically different with editing. Uh, Terry Gilliam's Brazil. Uh, Criterion edition of that uh, came out uh, probably 90s, 2000s, around there. Uh, if you can find it or probably watch it online, they, they now have a online digital presence. Point being is uh, it has um, three different versions of the same film. Uh, there is kind of the theatrical release, there's the director's cut, which is uh, significantly longer, and then there's the Love Conquers All version. Um, if you're not familiar with the movie, um, it's broadly, it's dystopian, and it has a very dark tone throughout. And uh, this doesn't spoil it. Um, the Love Conquers All version tries to make it um, cheerful um and network tv friendly and it is awful but it is fascinating to watch both the you know specifically the director's cut followed by love conquers all version so you know what like the you know the true vision was and then you see kind of like the same movie same material put together in a different way with you know only just slight differences of footage you know can make totally a much one is one is a masterpiece, the other's a turd. You know, it is wa worth watching the turd. I would say watch the turd with uh, director's commentary, you know, with there, so you have some context into what's happening. Awesome. Watch the turd. And that's probably a nice place to leave this, although the last thing I will ask, if it's okay, is if it's okay that I ask this, if I'd be really self-indulgent, does anybody have um, specific URLs? for things for ambient and dark ambient musics, besides the one that John so uh, uh, awesomely provided. Alex. I don't know if it's a good idea because I haven't done such things, but there's a YouTuber who um, does videos on um, music and special releases on vinyl, and he also likes like um, uh, records with a story, like an overarching story and what? what i probably would do if it's in your reach um maybe 
just write an email so, hey i've got this release would you like a promotional copy okay i like it i don't know if it's a good idea maybe it's uh, uh, he will of be offended or maybe um maybe it goes nowhere and you don't get a video of it but worst case you send a record and nothing comes of it i love uh, it yeah his url is it's pet Tennington. Uh, could you just chuck it in the, in the uh in the thing oh so he probably has like a business email or so it might be a good fit i love it man i'm grateful for this thank you uh, okay Okay, uh, um, and let's, because we, we're kind of looking down the barrel of time now, and I'm really grateful for everybody's input. This has been good. Um, if anybody else has something last minute they want to say, um, otherwise, I'm gonna, we're going to fuck off and go watch MTV TV and hang out in the Zoom and talk a bit more. Anyone else? Anyone? All right. Thank you. Um, this is really excellent. Uh, I am really grateful for this. This has been a really positive day. Um, and remember, I'm going to just uh, put one more piece of pimpage in here if I can actually find this piece of pimpage. Bum, 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 bum. That's my new song called The Theme Song to Pimpage. Every fucking uh, Sunday, 9 a.m. Chicago, I mean, uh, L.A. time, we are here. Um, and if you're bored, go check this out. This is some great tracks on the Spotify now from bands here. Um, it's excellent. And now we're going to raid on over to MTV TV because there are some awesome, amazing tracks hanging out there. Yes. Rock and roll. Tomorrow, uh, next Sunday. Same time, same channel. Following Just Bits Twitch, you rock. Rock!